This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition, today's Friday edition of The Pit Stop, where I am here to hang out with you, my good friends, in sim racing, just to BS and talk about sim racing. Happy Friday to everybody. You know I'm pumped up on Fridays because we got the weekend ahead of us. And uh, let's start things off on a downward note, but I'm going to put an upward twist on it. You see the thumbnail of today's in, uh, image. You know, they called him the bandit. Uh... American icon, actor, star, Burt Reynolds passed away yesterday. And and I know that has nothing to do with sim racing. But when I think of Burt Reynolds and I think about the movie uh, Smokey and the Bandit, and I actually think back to what were the influences in my life that pushed me towards loving cars, loving racing, uh, loving automotive culture. What what was it in my life? Uh, you might not know. I, I grew up with a single mom. My mom was not a car person. She was not a racing fan. It didn't come from there. I come from a, uh, a conservative family that, well, conservative has nothing to do with it, that, that are not into racing at all. Nobody. So I think back to my childhood. Smokey and the Bandit came out in 1977. That would have made me eight or nine years old and I know how much I loved that movie the day I saw it and might not have even understood a lot of it but I love the movie and it I will say that Smokey and the Bandit easily was one of the huge factors and influences in my life you could talk about other movies that Burt Reynolds did like the Cannonball Run another automotive culture movie uh that black Trans Am would that car have ever been as iconic as it became if it weren't for Burt Reynolds and Smokey and the Bandit. So uh, I feel bad for the Reynolds family. I feel bad for fans, myself included, of Burt Reynolds. I've always been a big fan of him. And it's a sad day. But again, maybe it isn't. I mean, it is a sad day. But again, there is a good twist. Uh, Burt Reynolds may have had one of the biggest influences in my life to wear. And I, I never thought of that until today, by the way. And I just think, what is it? How is it that I went from this, like, kid with a single mom who was never exposed to cars? How did I become a, a, a guy just obsessed with racing? So, anyway, um, a sad day for everybody with that. Uh, but, again, what were your influences? Maybe it wasn't movies for you. Maybe it was your dad. Uh, GameSpot has a write-up here. Here's Burt Reynolds. Um, what is it that made you guys get into cars into racing into automotive culture was your dad a hot rod guy was your dad a racing guy was your god oh stroker ace absolutely um was it other influences what is it that got you into racing um and and i think movies easily is something that did it for me maybe soon after that i have to confess i think that video games are part of what Gabe, yeah, I should have shaved down to a mustache just to honor Burt Reynolds. That would have been classic. He finished his career with a beard, though. Um, video games. Uh, you know, some of the best early arcade games were absolutely driving games. First games to incorporate, like, steering wheel and, like, you felt like you were really doing it, not just a couple of buttons. Um, so, I, 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 but no doubt, Burt Reynolds was part of it. Smokey and the Bandit, Cannonball Run, Stroker Ace, all part of what turned into me today um so yeah uh your dad's car uh you know if i'd grown up with my dad my dad was far more into racing uh than my mom was but i really only got exposed to that like two weeks of the year to be honest uh you know typical split family um anyway uh all right moving into sim racing news thanks for your thoughts on that I skipped the last group, so we first talked about the Italian, no, 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 we talked about the German group first in this Forza Monthly uh, on September 10th, three days from now, you'll be able to vote on what the next group of cars into Forza are, Forza 7, not Horizon. Would it be the German group with the Porsche, the Mercedes-Benz, the BMW, or the Audi? Or will it be the Italian group with the LaFerrari, Maserati, Gran Turismo, Alfa Romeo, Giulia, Old School? or the Lamborghini and the Lamborghini or our next choice by the way look at that I would if I were gonna buy a car and get into anything I would love to get myself an old hot rod like this 
I would love that. Sorry, sorry. Diversion. Friday Diversion Day. And then the next group being introduced is the UK group that you'll be able to to vote on uh, with the McLaren, the Jaguar, the Lotus Elan, and Elan. I don't know where I lost my N. And the Bentley. I think if Lotus was French, it would be Elan. Uh, anyway, uh, you can vote on that. And if you're interested in that, you can check that at Forza Twitter feed. <laughs> Shave the beard, keep the porn stash. Yeah, you know, it would have been classic to have done that just for today. Sonic Worm, outrun. Absolutely. Um, no doubt in my mind, I think back to when I was playing outrun. Uh, I wasn't even thinking about cars yet, to be honest with you. I was still a bicycle kid. Uh, so, yes, absolutely. These things happened before I turned 16. You know what else got me into racing and cars? I love RC racing. And I loved RC cars from the day we saw. I mean, in the, if you're as old as I am, everybody who's as old as, oh, wow, what a Friday. We're not even in sim racing. If you're as old as I am, which is 50, I'm 50. Um, the first RC cars I remember only turned left. It might have been only turned right. I think it was only turned right, actually. And you would accelerate and you would press a button and it would turn right and if you wanted to go left you basically had to make one two three lefts uh right in order to be going left that was the early days i mean in my in my day if you wanted to turn left and right you had to be in a slot car track <laughs> uh all right you guys let's get back to it gran turismo has a whole bunch of videos that just came out in the last eight hours and they're covering all their various different regions and national uh, nations champions and all that. So eight hours ago, we have the EMEA region's top drivers duking it out. You can watch that race of some top, top GT sport driving going on. Battle for second going on there. This is the Nations Cup. Top 24 guys. In addition to that, we have the Manufacturers Cup. Uh, FIA, so, ooh, some mayhem going through the chicane there. Lots of cars all over the place. Lots of warping going on, too. Gotta love the invisible cars that go on when somebody crashes in GT Sport, but you can check that out. In addition to that, the next round of uh, the Na the Nations Cup, some more battles. In addition to that, the next round of the Manufacturers Cup. So if you're just looking for some sim racing entertainment, you're sitting at wor work board and you want to pull something up on the cell phone just to see it, you'll find four decent uh, broadcasts out of Gran Turismo. The final Manufacturer's Cup was decided by a quarter second between the top three drivers, just to give you an idea how cutthroat that competition is. Uh, what else? Formula One put out a video. Remember we talked about that Amsterdam, the Burs de, Burs of Belage event that they had done. And they made a headline event video that you can... It was... It was... It was uh, Started karting at the age of a few later. Shoot my spot. Kid on the motorsport hook. Yep. Man, I really, really... I, how many of you... I mean, this is... Now we're going to get depressed. How many of you wish your parent had just stuck you in a go-kart when you were 10? I mean, that was so far from... That wasn't... It wasn't even a matter of being a possibility. That was an unknown. I didn't... My, my family didn't even know that something could be done there. Hey, Jesse, how you doing? No, we try to stay away from politics, and we, in fact, I honestly, in all, in all fairness, I actually killed one story today, because I just, I, I don't even want to go there, uh, <clears throat> and I, I should apologize publicly to Joe, I kind of singled, uh, Fajita Joe out yesterday, uh, when he had made a political comment, and I could have pulled him aside, and all I was trying to do was prevent a response comment from happening, no politics here, no politics in sim racing, um, let's see, what did I, oh, well, we have another mem meet the member, this is, I have a different link, I don't mean to be here, this is the Assetto Corsa, but they do have, this is three hours ago, another one of the meet, one of the 505 drive, uh, 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 employees, so this is Brass Engine Matt, he's their multimedia designer at 505 Games, so, Benjamin Worthen in the house. Benjamin, you are the real star today. today's show. Thank you for being here, buddy. Um, Benjamin's a good friend of mine. We talk on the phone. He used to live in town, and now he's uh, moved elsewhere. He's moved up north. 
So, Assetto Corsa does have a blog that I haven't been following, so I can't remember. I might have poached this at a race department, but I give them credit for other stuff in a moment. Um, uh, but anyway, they do have another blog here talking about the whole journey towards Assetto Corsa Competizione. So, this comes to us from Aristotle, uh, you know, one of the head, head, head guys at ACC, and talking all about it. In addition to that, uh, this is where race department was. They have their blog post number two on tires. So if you want to hear about all of the, the tire stuff and work that they've done, uh, things that they've encountered switching over to the new engine, because as you know, they've moved over to the Unreal engine, and I believe that's different um, and something they had to make adaptions to. So great write-up at race department. I'll give them a pat on the back for getting a, a very... Um, very uh, uh, cool information on what's going on. So you and I wish I had had that story. Uh, anyway, GT Planet has an article here talking, and and I I've mentioned this, but I kind of made a mess of it the other day. So I just want to let you guys know. Um, they wrote up an article at GT Planet that really breaks down like easier than the graphical version. If you want to know the rollout, the pricing, and all that kind of stuff, you have release one for twenty four ninety nine euro. And it's just one car, one track, a few events to run. And you're going to have to wait until October 10th to get more. But you can still get in at that October 10th. Then they're going to add the Bentley Continental. So now you're going to have two cars. Masano World tra Circuit. So now you're going to have two tracks. Um, release 3 is when it's going to step up in money. So I just want to be clear to all of you guys, just so you know. Release 3 is going to be $34.99. So another 10 bucks or euro. You're gonna, that'll happen November 14th, and on that day is when we're going to see the BMW M6 GT3. That'll be a cool car. And Circuit de Paul Ricard uh, track added as well. And in addition to that is when that is when you are going to see multiplayer reach the game. So when are you going to be able to race against your friends is the most important question to me. November 14th. And if you hadn't got in early, it's going to cost you $34.99. So anyway, good write up here, and it plays it out all the way till the final uh, release point, release six, February thirteenth, two thousand nineteen. That's when it should be pretty close to the full blown game and final uh, pre-release pricing. And they haven't seen said if there's going to be a jump in price when they go to full game. Are we going to see fifty nine ninety nine? Not sure about that. Yes, Tom, that's how it's going to be, and that's why I'm trying to explain it to you guys this way. If you're going to get a Seto Corsa, even if you have no interest in playing the first version other than to maybe get a taste, but maybe you buy it coming up on September 12th. Here's my recommendation for everybody who knows they're going to buy it, but they're maybe not ready to do just one car, two cars. Buy it. Buy it before October 10th, and then that way... You can just sit on it and wait until the game comes out in Q1 2019. Um, so that might be the way to do it as well. Then you still save 20 bucks. I mean, and you can start dabbling in it prior to that. And as of that third build, you'll be able to race multiplayer. So it might only be three cars, three tracks, but you'll be able to race against your friends. <clears throat> the car has an interesting event. This is today at Comic-Con, I do believe. And... Any of you uh, Dakar people might know these names. I don't. I'm assuming these are, I mean, is Ari Vatanen still a racer? <laughs> anyway, they have a Nani Roma and Alex Haro versus Ari Vatanen and Pedro Bianchi. So <clears throat> you can check that out at the Dakar Rally Twitter page. Um, yeah, Jesse, same here. Viking Elite, I just call him Jesse, uh, says he just plans to sit on it. And that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. It's just like, go ahead and buy it. Maybe you'll fire it up every couple, you know, weeks and just to taste it and get a sense of it and get inspired for the future. And maybe you check out each build as it rolls out. But maybe you don't become fully dedicated until later. Lion Heart Racing Series in the show, in the house today. You are the real star today show. A good racing group says ACC, the most unnecessary game of 2019. That's a, uh, a bold statement. <laughs> uh, all right, Thrustmaster, I told you it was going to happen, and now we're seeing them. I mean, I've seen, I've actually put these on my head. They weren't plugged in, but they did have them at E3. 
the Ferrari branded Thrustmaster uh, headset, which looks real deal. Just looking at them, these look like the kind of headset they wear on a real race team versus gaming headphones. And even though I love my Sennheisers, um, you know, the way it looks, that's very much a gaming headset. That looks like the real deal pro, you know, IndyCar F1 headset. I do like that. Oh, he's a Pikes Peak guy. Ari did Pikes Peak, says David Grunnell. That's awesome. I saw a video the other day of uh, Pikes Peak uh, before it was paved. And for the for you young guys, you might not realize this. Back in the day, Pikes Peak was a dirt uphill uh, uh, hill climb type event. Um, oh, I did use them. Billy Strange with the correction. I did use them. They were outstanding. No. <laughs> I was trying to check out Assetto Corsa and do very well uh, at the time, so I'm not sure I was concentrating. Thank you for that correction, though, Billy. Oh, we are really long-winded. 15 minutes, and I'm just getting along, but I'm having a good time. Enjoying my Friday. Spatial, yes, it was on, It was under. It was under. Thank you. you guys, man, you guys are so awesome. This show is getting better every day, I got to tell you. Just... Uh, and another thing, I don't know if you guys realize, today, and I've been playing with this, and I might as well tell it, gosh, we are a mess today. I've been playing with the latency or the delay on the show. And I noticed that for a while I had it on the 20 second delay. I can make it almost instantaneous. Each time I change it, I do get a handful of uh, uh, gripes from people because they will say, oh, I can't rewind if I'm on the instant. But when it's on a slower delay, it allows me to interact with you guys a lot better. Um, other thing I'm noticing here in this image, just since I've been dwelling and sitting here for a while, number one, that's an R seat with a Thrustmaster wheel. Number two, that is a TGT base with a Ferrari formula rim on it. Uh, never seen that set up. I, of course it would work, they're all in the family, but uh, there you go. Uh, in Sean's day. Get off my lawn! <laughs> yes, so true. Uh, they look heavy. I don't remember them being heavy. Maybe Billy can elaborate on that and we'll get a, a set in for review. And there's always going to be complaints no matter what. I've learned that about our world. <laughs> So anyway, I, I'm inclined to leave it here. I'm on the medium one. I think we're on about a four second delay. Uh, and and I think the, the faster one, or no, this was like a seven second delay. The faster one was about three or four seconds. And then the normal one that I do is 20 seconds. At 20 seconds, you can rewind as much as you want. All right, moving right along. Not anything to do with sim racing other than he does run FA Logitech G2 racing, but Fernando Alonso did. Uh, have that test in an Indy car finally. So he went to Barber Motorsports. And I haven't read the article, but I did read the headlines because this was all over the internet, of course. And it sounds like he really enjoyed himself. He he said the cars were quite unique, I think was his word, which could be taken a great many ways. But no, I don't recall them being heavy either, Billy. Um, Moto Racer 4 is coming to Switch next month. So anybody who has a Switch and you're just looking for something to be able to even play on it as far as as a sim racer goes moto racer 4 is coming true achievements is talking about the achievement list for nascar heat 3 so since that is pretty much upon us uh if you want to know what kind of prizes you can get i mean the minute you start talking about achievements i'm i on one hand i'm like oh well that's very gamey on the other hand that's the kind of stuff that i think that our sims are missing uh, more of that putting that challenge. Like, would it kill him to give me a little floaty on my screen saying, congratulations, that's your first race win. Congratulations, that's your 100th lap. I don't know. It'd be kind of cool. Any game could do it, in theory. I mean, most of them are logging the data. Tech Power Up talking about sharp decline in VR headset shipments in quarter two, 2018, but the market outlook remains positive. And... What's going to change that market? Well, the change is upon us. Pimax, Pmax, how do you say that? Um, they are getting ready to. They're prepping the 8K and 5K VR headset shipment. So all you early investors, and I know one of the uh, patron guys was an early investor, so one's probably on the way to you, and I'm very, very jealous. But the new Pmax uh, startup version, sort of like when you think back to when 
Oculus rolled out way, way, way back in the beginning. Uh, but they are finally coming. And if you, what's going to change VR? The next gen. And the next gen are upon us. The Pmax 5K. I didn't know they were doing a 5K. Plus, joins the Pmax 8K. VR games are playing much better now. So I'm guessing that the 5K one is getting better refresh rate. I mean, just without a hunch. I mean, without a, any knowledge. I'm just kind of playing an assumption on how many pixels a 8K VR unit would do. So... Uh, that that will be a game changer, and that will be something that will accelerate. Because when this happens, it's going to create a new buzz. It's also probably going to cause another reduction in price on the old units. Like, I've been holding out for the Oculus VR. Um, maybe when this comes out, they will drop it down to 350 officially instead of 399 And then maybe I won't be able to hold out any longer. Uh, but... Pmax is leading the way right now when it comes to that next gen, and I cannot wait to hear and read some articles on how it's going. And will I? When will I get a hand my hands on one? Uh, we talk about Lionheart Racing Series, and Lionheart is here in the studio, in the the office, <laughs> in the chat with us today. Uh, Lionheart, I mentioned that they are running it, and they had their Texas shootout, and Weaver won the race. So just congratulating another sim racer and one of the finest sim racing uh, open-wheeled iRacing series that you're going to find. I know a few guys from our group have run over there now. So we've, we've, we're starting to uh, infest and, uh, and get into other leagues. Uh, Full Throttle has an article. I think we mentioned that F1 2018 was top of the charts in UK. Well, they went on to be number one in UK, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Austria, Switzerland, Belgium, Holland, Denmark, and Finland. Gee, you wonder why Europeans, and I'm going to offend a bunch of Americans right now. You wonder why Europeans are better at racing than Americans. Ooh, did he say that? Oh, shots fired on a Friday. Um... But look where F1 2018 was number one in sales. I don't see United States on that list. But with or without the United States making it number one, F1 2018 was top selling game uh, for August, I do believe it was. I told you guys about the whole MotoGP esport that is going on out there. But uh, Trats Rivera. Tra Trast Rivera, 73, tops practice for the se semifinal number one. So this could be one of the names that we'll be hearing more and more about it. Americans only turn left. Now, I'm, uh, now I just conceded that Europeans are better at racing than Americans, but T-Bone, we do know how to turn right. <laughs> just not as well. <laughs> uh, this is at esmotor1.com and I had to use Google Translate. It was sent in to me by Thawman. Thawman always sending me so many great stories and you know Thawman's moving on to other things and I'm going to be losing his incredible diligence and incredible service to the sim pit sending in stories. So there is going to be a whole one. If anybody out there, again, if you guys know of sim racing news, things you think we need to be talking about, because it's not just showing it to you. Things we need to be talking about Please send them to me, Sean, S-H-A-U-N at thesimpit.com. But this year's 24 Hours of Barcelona will have its homonymous test with sim racing face-to-face -face <clears throat> race held at circuits facilities. And they go on to say, li listen to who's going to be at this event that they have. So this is the Barcelona 24 Hour. Um, the admission will be free both for the 24 Hour sim racing and for the 24 Hours of uh, Barcelona from automobile the Vilismo Trofeo Fermi Velez. Um, anyway, but we are going to have, let's see here, we're going to have Williams eSport team is going to be there. NWS eSport team, Odox Motorsport, Vodafone Giants, Euphoria Racing, uh, in addition to the journalist Albert Fabrega, don't know him, maybe some of you guys do, uh, play with the Race 4 Cat team. Anyway, sounds like a really cool event going on Friday the 7th, 8th, and 9th uh, for all of you in Spain. I wish I was in Spain. Spain is somewhere that I would really, really like. Oh, and it's going to be an Assetto Corsa running the Porsche 911 RSR 2017. So this could be a cool event. Here's a photo. Oh, wait, that's something else. Sorry. 
A uh, hoss driver. This is yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. That was a real challenge for me, stepping over my own tongue. Um, Haas F1 esport driver Smittle. Is that how you say his name? Smittle? Smittle? And I know he was a, a Gran Turismo uh, Academy driver. See? Uh, he says the team is more important than his own glory. So that I, I wonder about that in the world of esport. You're on the Haas. You're on the Haas, I should say, Formula One esport team. And is it about team? Or is it about me? I want to win. I want to be the world champion. Uh, what else? What else? Wow, we're to the end. I felt like I was so long-winded today. This was sent in by Thawman, and this is an incredible rig. I, this was found at UEO, UEO.info. GMD amazing sim racing setup. Check the description. This thing, I've seen these rigs. These are really cool. I, I, this is like an adaption, adapted version of these metal plate rigs with cool hardware, but... This guy at a flip of a switch can move his pedals up into a Formula One position. The whole rig switches over. So it's not just changing the wheel rim from a GT rim to a Formula rim, but it's also changing the entire setup of the wheel. I mean, of the rig. Everything on it moves and changes to make it a Formula One rig versus GT. So I thought that was very impressive and worth seeing. You'll find that at UEO GMD Amazing. You know what? This one is so cool that I'm just going to put it right here in the chat for everybody watching live. Um, anyone not watching live, it's at UEO GMD Amazing Sim Racing Setup. Check description. <clears throat> so we have some details here on all the stuff that he's got. Butt kickers. I mean, he's got everything in this, obviously. I mean, everything you'd expect. Um, oh, this guy's from Sim Racing Middle East. Those are the guys who are hold, hosting that event we talked about just the other day. Middle East is getting the eSport, McLaren Shadow eSport. The Middle East is the latest explosion in Sim Racing, hands down. So before I leave you on a Friday, because that is the end of the news, I want to thank Tim Chitwood, known as Spatial Dragon, here in the chat. Tim is one of the guys who is very great about taking on the challenge is when I throw them out there. I talked about the race room challenges that were going on. Asked you guys to send me images so I could show you. So Tim, thank you, Tim, one of our patron members. He threw down the gauntlet and he ran a couple of different events there. This is the first one. This is in the GTR3. He ran a 149 and it looks like that puts him in sixth place of Division 7. Can you beat Ch Tim? Where will you be out there on the race room leaderboard challenge. He also threw down the gauntlet in the Super Racer, and it looks like he's second in Division 6 with a 243 in the Super Racer. So two challenges on race room. If you're just looking for something fun to do this weekend, you don't have a big race or you just feel like doing some racing, maybe pop into race room and see if you can beat Tim and be sure to send me the image of your, of your accomplishments, no matter what leaderboard you go after. I love making you guys the star of the show. Speaking of star of the show, one of the next things coming up is the Sim Pit Truck Series. I'm calling it our fall series. Friday nights at 6 p.m. We are running an 11-week series starting next Friday, a week from today at 6 p.m. We are loosely following the iRacing Fixed Truck Series, but we're going to throw it through a few curveballs. There are a couple of tracks that don't coincide with the real NASCAR, so we threw them out and threw in a couple more road courses. We also threw in... A dirt track just to make it a fun season and then we left a lot of the season in it intact for what they're doing if you if you want to join so uh, sorry about that if you would like to join us in the sim pit truck series this is open to everybody please email me sean at the simpit.com and tell me you want to be in the truck series and i will put you on the email list um i'm setting up the season still having a little trouble with i racing but i'm getting it worked out and all you have to do is let me know, and you'll get an email telling you how to join us for that official, not official series, but it's going to be a whole league format, a little different than what we did last season. <clears throat> no, no, you do not have to be a patron. This is open to everybody. Uh, the patron guys will be privy to uh, some private practices that we might do. They'll be privy to being maybe perhaps in the audio, but I think we're going to try to take things a little more seriously. So audio is not going to be quite as the madness that it's been. However, speaking of madness, speaking of crazy audio, 
two things. Number one, tomorrow at 10 a.m., we are going to run Wreckfest. Patrons get in first. Viewers get in second. That's the way we're, we work. All the patron guys will be in the chat because there is nothing more fun than talking smack and playing Wreckfest. But I'm going to make this available to somebody out there. So we're going to do a special little contest. This is just literally a 24-hour contest. And it's only available to people who watch this episode of The Pit Stop. Jesse Conroy has a free code to Wreckfest. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., we are going to play Wreckfest. Wreckfest with frenemies, we like to call it. So our contest, and all you're going to have to do is be a subscriber to both the Simpit and the Simpit Crew channel. Both channels. Send me an email with the subject line has to be Wreckfest. Just Wreckfest. Give me your username on YouTube so I can verify that you are a subscriber to both the Simpit and the Simpit Crew channel. And if you are, the winner is going to get a free copy of Wreckfest Steam Code, and you'll be able to join us tomorrow. In addition to that, that person, if they're not already, is going to get a complimentary one-month membership to our patron group, which means not only can you Wreckfest with us tomorrow, but you'll be on the first list because you'll be part of the patron group. You'll be in the chat with us if you want and that way you can uh, be part of the smack talking, which just multiplies the fun of Wreckfest by 10. So uh, that is going on again. Free copy of Wreckfest. Compliments of Jesse Conroy. It's a Steam code for the PC version. One month membership to the patron group so you can hang out with the guys and just see how things work on the inside and how we all hang out and have so much fun. And you'll be able to race with us tomorrow. And if you don't win... You can still race with us tomorrow. You'll just have to wait for us to give out the password once we get the event going. So that's tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And the last thing I'm going to say, I want to thank Dave Rutledge for sending in. He's there in Malaysia. You can see the new dot on the map on the, the, the round island there in Malaysia area. Dave Rutledge has been playing, uh, um, uh, come on, Sean, Project Cars 2 with us on Tuesday nights. And kind of beating up on us, to be honest with you. So he sent an apology to the guys for uh, beating us. But uh, he's there playing out of Malaysia. So now you know when you see and hear him on the show playing with us on Project Cars or other times. And if you are not on that map, if you don't see you represented on that map, another excuse to email me, Sean, S-H-A-U-N at thesimpit.com. Let me know where you're from, from. Let me know the great stories we need to talk about here on the Pit Stop. And, of course... Enter that contest, get a copy of Wreckfest and a patron membership, and be able to join us for all the fun stuff that we do out of there. That's going to do it for today. Happy Friday. Get out there, do some racing. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track. <laughs>